Hi, this is Bill for Sparky Channel. Today I'm going to show you how to do a lime and scale flushing procedure on a ream tankless water heater. Then we're going to be going over error codes for the ream tankless water heater. After that, I'll be giving you a tour of the inner workings of our ream condensing tankless water heater so that you'll have an excellent idea of what we're trying to accomplish with the lime and scale flushing procedure as well as giving you some tips for doing other maintenance on your tankless water heater. First, turn your hot water on. This will turn your uh, tankless water heater on. With your remote on, turn off the electricity to the tankless water heater. If you have an interior uh, tankless water heater, you can just unplug it. Turn your hot water off. Turn the gas valve off. Turn the cold water supply to the tankless water heater off. Turn the hot water valve off. Put your clean submersible utility pump in your clean five gallon bucket. I have to stress that everything needs to be clean and sanitary. I. Uh, it's a brand new bucket and I just scrubbed it with soap and water and I scrubbed the, the outside of the pump with uh, soap and water and it's never been used for anything except pumping vinegar uh, through uh, tankless hot water heaters. Now I'm going to be running a short piece of garden hose. This is a clean garden hose um, and I've put an extra female end on it. It comes to one female end and I cut it and I put a another female end on here. One female end goes to the submersible pump. There. Now you open the valve, the maintenance valve, for the cold water side. Now you take the cap. Give me a little water in here. Okay, let the water drain out. The more water you can get out of the system, the better. The more water you get out of the system, the more a higher percentage of vinegar you can, you can uh, use to do your pumping. Now I'm going to hook the other female end of my garden hose to the maintenance valve. Now open the maintenance valve on the hot water side and open the maintenance cap. A little bit of water in there too. Let it drain out. The more water that comes out of the system, the better. I got a little bucket under it to catch it. Again, I have a little piece of garden hose. It has a. I put a female end on it, and it has the male end that came with it. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this on. Now we've got the submersible pump with the uh, cold water line uh, hooked up to the pump and we have the return line which is the hot from coming from the hot water valve coming back into the pail. Now I'm going to add four gallons of food grade white vinegar uh, to the pail. The instructions uh, for the uh, ream unit say to use five gallons but I can't fit five gallons in a five gallon pail when, with the pump in there. So I, I spoke with the technical expert at Ream about this. He said, okay, four gallons is good, but don't do any less than four gallons. It gets too diluted. Uh, there's, a, there's like a gallon of water or so in the unit, and it, you will, if you only use two or three gallons, it's going to be too diluted. So uh, use a, a minimum of four gallons. If you have a six gallon bucket, use five gallons. So you take your, your white vinegar and just dump it in here. Remember, the bucket's clean, the pump's clean, the hose is clean. And this is going into your, your water system. Your tankless water heater is part of your potable water system for your house.
All right, I've got four gallons of white food grade distilled vinegar. in the pail and I plug in the pump okay we have the pump going we got no leaks you gotta make sure you got good washers on your uh, hose ends before you put them on and we got the pump pumping away and I have a timer set for one hour and do this for one hour the instructions are from one from 45 minutes to one hour so I'm going to go ahead and do it for an hour. And while this is pumping, I want to discuss the reason why I, I turned on the kitchen faucet, the, the hot water on the kitchen faucet, prior to turning the electricity off to the ream unit. The reason for that is that I wanted it to totally ensure that the heat exchanger, which is located up in this, this area, of the tankless water heater gets cleaned out of lime and scale. If this procedure is done incorrectly, then the bypass valve will be left on and what will happen is that the vinegar that you're pumping through the system will bypass your heat exchanger or heat exchangers. You want the, the vinegar running through your heat exchanger. That's the whole point. Also, let me point out that I have an excellent pump this is a, a third horsepower submersible pump and when that vinegar gets up into the heat exchanger it's it's doing some good you know i'm not using a little tiny pump and a little a little tiny surgical tubing and that, you know that all reduces your water flow or in this case vinegar flow you want some hard vinegar flow you're trying to knock that lime and scale out of your heat exchanger each brand has its own way to make sure that you get the vinegar up into the heat exchanger with the full force. This procedure is going very well. We've been pumping for about five minutes. We have no leaks in any of the hoses. Everything's going just fine. I got my timer going and I'll uh, see you in about 55 minutes. Okay, we've been pumping the vinegar through the heat exchanger for an hour now and it's time to uh, first I'm going to turn off the pump okay pumps off the next thing you do is you close the cold water drain valve that's your maintenance valve you turn that off and take this hose off Okay, now we're done with the pump. Put the cap back on the maintenance valve. Take the hose that was going uh, from the hot water valve to the vinegar pail. Just let that drain out. Get all the vinegar out if you can. And put that in another bucket. Now what we're going to do is uh, open up this valve and and clean the vinegar out of the system. We're going to run this this cold water through through here and out the uh, the hose into the other bucket for five minutes. I have run uh, cold water through the system now for five minutes so I'm going to go ahead and turn off the uh, maintenance valve on the hot water side and take the hose off and put the cap back on the next thing to do is to clean out the water filter the water filter is located right here. This is the water filter, which is located right above the cold water valve. So it just comes undone uh, counterclockwise. A little water might come out.
Okay, here's the filter. There's a little water coming out, that's all right. And it's a stainless steel screen. And you have to examine it all the way around. I see a little bit of sediment in it. And I'm going to take that a little bit in the inside. I'm going to take that and scrub it with a greenie pad, both inside and outside of the screen. Okay. I just uh, scrubbed the screen, both the inside and the outside, and ran cold water over it really good. So it's nice and clean now. And you do that after you clean out your tankless water heater. Because it might trap some dirt while you're doing the cleaning, while you're doing the vinegar cleaning. So you do it after you clean it. Now turn on the cold water valve. Now turn on the hot water valve. Turn on the gas valve. Turn on the electrical. Make sure the remote is to your to set to your desired temperature. Turn on a hot water tap to make sure all the air is purged from the system. You see it's, it's belting a little air right now. We're still let that run for a little bit. Now run a hot water tap and make sure it's getting nice and hot and working the way you want it. That's, that's about 116 degrees. That's, that's working really well. Now error codes for ream tankless water heaters. These might pop up on your remote now and then. Code 00 indicates one hour continuous combustion. To correct this code, close all hot water taps to reset the unit. Turn off or remove circulation pumps. Code 05 indicates imperfect combustion. To remedy the problem, clean the air in that filter, air fan, and exchanger fins. Check that the air ventilation openings are open and clean if necessary. Code 10. This is a false flame detection code. Before calling for service, check to make sure that nothing is blocking the flue inlet or exhaust. Code 11. No ignition. Check to make sure there is gas to the unit and that the pressure is correct. Ensure the igniter is operational before calling for service. Code 16. This is an over temperature warning which could indicate a possible clogged heat exchanger. There may also be restricted airflow around the unit. Call for service. Code 29. This code indicates that the heat exchanger outlet temperature is too low. By cleaning the heat exchanger air inlet, the problem is typically resolved. And last but not least, error code 1L, flush tankless to remove scale and lime buildup. For other error codes, see the Ream website. Now, as promised, I'll give you a tour of our Ream RTGH-95DVLN. This is an indoor condensing tankless water heater. And I'm going to show you uh, some of the parts inside the tankless water heater that uh, may need to be replaced during the lifetime of the unit. This is the gas inlet right here. This particular unit is for natural gas, and this is a three-quarter inch inlet. Uh, Ream uh, gives you a, a three-quarter inch gas valve. It goes right there so you can sh shut off the gas to the unit. And next to it is the cold water supply. It's the water inlet. And again, it's, it's three-quarters inch. It comes in right here. And this right here is your filter. The next connection is the remote connection. Uh, Ream gives you the uh, remote and it gives you, they give you uh, 10 feet of thermostat wire. So the thermostat wire goes right in there. See there's a little hole there that it can go through. Right here we have the hot water. So the hot water comes out. Once it's heated, the hot water comes out right here to your hot water supply of your house. This is your condensate. I'm going to show you more about this when I'm showing you the inside of the unit. But uh, condensate comes out, out right here. It's a half inch and it could be like a flex line 
and you take that to a drain or to outside of your house. Uh, it might drip a little bit uh, now and then depending on your weather conditions and how you're using the tankless water heaters and so forth. This right here uh, also is for condensate but it's air and air can come out of here uh, when it needs to. I'll show you more about this one later as well. So these both have to do with the condensate unit. This is air and this is water. These rubber grommets right here are for hooking up multiple tankless water heaters. Ream calls it the Easy Link system. And so that's what these are for. If you just have one tankless water heater, you just leave them there like that. Whenever a hot water tap is turned on, the water enters the unit right here. This is the, the cold water inlet. Okay, so the water enters right here and that triggers a switch and that switch turns on this gas valve and the gas is then then flows up to this area underneath the manifold this is the manifold and underneath the manifold is the burner and the burner ignites so we, we have the water flowing into the unit and we have the burner ignited now let me show you where all the magic happens here we go right up here those are the heat exchangers this unit has dual heat exchangers the one on the top is stainless steel. The one on the bottom is copper. So we have the water flowing up here, the cold water flowing up here. The burner has ignited now. It's under, underneath here. Now the water flows right in here into the, what's called the secondary heat exchanger. The heat exchangers are uh, the heart of the unit. It's where the heat from the gas burning in the burner is exchanged for hot water and this exchange rate happens in this unit at 94 percent efficiency the heat from the, the gas is used to heat the hot water and 94 percent of the energy in that gas is used in this unit so we have the cold water going into the secondary heat exchanger it's stainless steel and I'm going to explain why this is stainless steel. It's very important that it be stainless steel. So it goes through here and the water gets preheated. And the preheat is ingenious. It is preheated by the excess gases from the primary heater. You see we got the burner going. We got, we got the excess gases that normally uh, leave right out the exhaust vent in, in a normal tankless water heater that isn't condensing. See this is a condensing tankless water heater. Then those excess gases that are normally expelled are used in the secondary heat exchanger to preheat the uh, water and then it, it comes back out of the secondary heat exchanger and goes into the primary heat exchanger where the water is heated rapidly. This is where the, the principal heating of the water occurs in the primary heat exchanger. And as this is happening, uh, more gases uh, go into the secondary heat exchanger so that the water coming in is efficiently preheated so that the water going into the primary heat exchanger has a head start. It's already, it's already uh, warm. So it makes the whole unit very, very efficient. However, these gases that normally escape in a, in a regular tankless wa hot water heater are acidic. That's why this unit, the secondary heat exchanger, has to be stainless steel. And you see, you have a condensing tube coming out of the secondary heat exchanger. This condensing tube it collects water. A typical hot water heater, the gases that escape are, are about 300 degrees. Gases that escape from this unit are going to be somewhere in the neighborhood between 100 and 150 degrees, uh, much lower. I've heard 100, I've heard 125 degrees. Anyway, the gases are much lower. I'm sure it would vary with how hot you're, you're trying to heat your water and so forth. But the gases are, are around uh, two, two or three times lower in temperature. So they go out right here, but it, it creates an acidic uh, condensate which is acidic water that comes out this condensate tube right here and that condensate tube goes to the neutralization kit right here it's a plastic bottle and 
it's filled with calcium carbonate. The lifespan of this unit is 10 years. After 10 years, you're going to get a readout on your uh, remote. It has a, a certain number, and that when you look it up, you're just going to say, okay, it's, there's two of them. One of them say, well, your neutralization kit is about to go bad, and the other one number says you have to change out your neutralization kit. This neutralizes the acidic waters that come from the secondary heat exchanger. But you don't have to change this kit out. You can just get a quart of calcium carbonate crystals. They're like little rocks. And you take this out, you dump out the old car calcium carbonate, put in new calcium carbonate, and you're set. You know, unless there's a, unless the plastic breaks or something, uh, which isn't likely. So you can actually just buy some new calcium carbonate and put it in there, and your new neutralization kit will be working just fine. All right, let me show you something else. Another ingenious uh, product that Ream has. This right here is called the Guardian Overheat Film Wrap. If your, heat ex if your copper heat exchanger, your primary heat exchanger, overheats, something goes wrong and it overheats, it will burn up this overheat film wrap. And see, these are conductors. These black things in here are conductors. If they burn up, then that turns off the whole circuit. It turns off the whole unit and protects it. So this is, that's what this is. In case you open it up, you're wondering what in the world it is. It's, it's a Guardian overheat film wrap. It says right on it, do not remove or cut. Damage will disable water heater. Okay, let me tell you a little more about the manifold. Uh, here's, here's your manifold, and it has to do with something called manifold pressure. So if you want to use one of these units over 3,280 feet of altitude, well, you read your manual. And it's going to tell you to change one of these switches. It's, it'll be switch number three. And at twice that elevation, you would, change, you would switch on number four. Moving down from the burner manifold, we have this unit right here. And this is called the control board. This is uh, what controls all your digital readouts and the electrical functionality of the unit. If this goes bad, then you get a, a certain readout and you'll need a new control board. And this, this is a, one of the parts, well, everything's under warranty for a certain amount of time. You have to check your, your warranty. But uh, if this goes bad within your warranty, you just call Ream and they'll send you another one. And the way I would suggest replacing it, if you're going to replace it, is uh, take a photograph first so that uh, you know that the red jumper goes here and the white jumper goes there and the blue jumper goes there and, and so forth. Because when you change this out, you have to unplug all these jumpers and you screw this control board off, put your new control board on, and then you got to put all the jumpers back where they go. I did that once and I had uh, excellent service from the Ream Technical Service. They really helped me out. Uh, with the control board. So that's what this is right here. That's your control board. These are the hoses coming from your neutralization kit. The bigger one is for wa your water condensate. After it goes through the calcium carbonate of the neutral neutralization kit, it's just regular water and it can safely be disposed of in any drain or outside the house. The smaller one is for air. It's basically for air intake to let air into the system so that the water will flow out better. This is where the water comes into the system. And see there's two pipes right here. And underneath these two pipes are what's called a bypass valve. And this is really important to know about this bypass valve when you're cleaning this unit out once a year for maintenance. And by the way, a condensating tankless water heater is exactly the same as a regular tankless water heater for maintenance. It's about once a year you need to flush the system with vinegar. So this is what's called the bypass valve right here. And you need the bypass valve to be closed when you uh, flush with vinegar. With your bypass valve closed, the vinegar will go through the correct pipe and go through your heat exchangers. You want your heat exchangers to be cleaned out. If you don't make sure your bypass valve is closed, then there is a pipe right here. You see, that will bypass your heat exchangers. 
and if your bypass valve is open your vinegar is going to go through this pipe and right out the side and your effort to clean your lime and sediment from your tankless water heater will will be wasted underneath the control board right down here this this round item right down there that's called the blower fan and it blows your exhaust out of the unit and out of your house normally tanked water heaters just rely on the hot air rising this uh, additionally has a blower fan and that's what that is down there so you can make uh, you know additional right hand turns and so forth and the exhaust gases will still get out because of the fan so take care of your tankless water heater and it'll take care of your hot water needs for many years to come i'll put links in my video description for the hottest tankless water heaters on the market today and i'll put links for the tankless water heater service valve kit i'll put a link for the webstone service valve kit it's lead free it's a three-piece kit and i'll put a link for the ream webstone it's a ream brand but it's made by webstone and uh, it is called clean brass and it qualifies for the california codes and so forth as lead free uh, so i'll put a link for that i'll put a link for the renai two-piece and i'll put a link for the watts two-piece tankless water heater service valve kit thanks i hope this video was helpful